positions. We've lost a control point. Help me, Robert the Bruce. You're my only hope. What is up, yes, to the gamers? Just gonna be dropping some hot DH-17 action today. And I gotta say, even though this is a weapon you unlock early, it is not to be overlooked. I try to adjust my gameplay and adapt based on the weapon, the map, the game mode, etc. But if I'm playing the way that I like to play, that fits my natural style the best, well, the DH-17 is right up my alley. My preference is to be up close and personal, in the heart of the action, doing some work. And this little blaster pistol was made for that. Let's look at a few of the stats for the DH-17 first, which, like usual, will give away what kind of weapon this is and how best to use it. Now, the E-11 is a great all-around weapon, so I'll compare it to that. So, compared to the E-11, the DH-17 has a way higher fire rate, can fire more shots before overheating, and the initial damage drop-off starts further out. The E-11, on the other hand, has way better damage per shot, better recoil management, and the damage drop-off ends a lot further out. So, it's fairly easy to see from the stats that the DH-17 will drop some fools in CQB, but it's not really going to hold up well at medium to long range, battling it out against a blaster rifle of some kind. So, what kind of class are we going to build around this weapon? Well, you can play it a few different ways. You can be a bit of a renaissance man who wants to be good at everything, and you can pair it with a pulse cannon or cycler rifle to give yourself some long range ability. Or you can be like Michonne in The Walking Dead, and you don't have much range, but you're flipping brutal in close quarters combat. Now, I toyed around with the explosive shot to see if the splash damage would help me take out guys a little farther away, but in the end, I preferred to build my entire class around being a close quarters ninja. So I will typically rock a jetpack. That way I can close the gap to enemies quickly or get away when necessary. Now, I've talked before about the thermal detonator being a great way to push enemies back and buy yourself time when needed. And then the Scan Pulse is one of my favorites for this class, because when you're in the heart of the battle, you are often outnumbered. Being able to know the exact enemy movements allows you to continually get the jump on all the baddies around you. It may only give you the advantage for some milliseconds, but in a game like this, that makes all the difference. Now lastly, I love the Bounty Hunter trait here. Normally I'm a big fan of Scout, but in a class like this, you're going to be all up in the enemy's bidness, and they're going to know you're there, so staying off the radar just is a minimal advantage. Getting tons of power-ups over and over, though, can be a huge help when you're in the belly of the beast. I posted 60 kills one game with this setup, and I never got in a vehicle or grabbed a hero power-up. It was all DH-17 work. If you're playing this setup right, you'll be surrounded by a whole bunch of bad guys quite a bit, so it opens up the potential for some massive kill totals. And it's also high risk, though, so you got to know going into it that you will have some streaks of dying a lot because you're constantly going to be under fire. Now, speaking of dying, though, a lot of deaths can be avoided if you will simply play to the strengths of your class setup. Don't be out in the open plains of Hoth battling it out at range. It's like guys wearing man buns. It's just not right. Now stick to areas of the map where you can dominate. Flank as much as possible. Don't be stingy with the scan pulse. If it's upgraded, you can fire off that sucker pretty quick after it wears off. And knowing enemy position is critical for this type of gameplay. So for the sanity of you and those around you, Remember these things, play to your class strengths, and don't wear a man bun. Now, if you heard me say earlier that I prefer the bounty hunter trait with this style of gameplay, and you thought, nah, I have another trait that I always use, let me make a small case for why bounty hunter fits so well here. Now, with this class setup and play style, you'll inevitably hit moments where you need more weapons. You've tossed your grenade, you've blasted through a few baddies, you dropped an elbow melee to the face on another one, but then you hit scan pulse and see four more about to round the corner. Now what? Well, if you have nothing available, you try and get cover or jetpack away for a minute, something like that. If you're running Bounty Hunter, though, you'll almost certainly have additional options. Maybe it's a card reset. You can activate it, toss another thermal detonator immediately, and then your blaster's ready to go again by that point. Or uh, maybe an infantry turret or droid that will do some work and draw some fire. Or maybe it's just a thermal dubstep imploder that's going to clear out the whole area. Now, you'll see moments in this video where I kept getting awesome power-ups using them, and then getting another one soon after, thanks to the Bounty Hunter perk. If you've got a trait you always stick to, take a few rounds and try out this setup with Bounty Hunter. The first time you have a good run with it, you'll probably be like I was the first time I had sushi, thinking, oh, huh, this is actually pretty good. So, do you have a D817 class that differs from mine that you rock with? And if you like blaster pistols, do you prefer it or the SE17C? I really like both, and I haven't yet decided on my clear-cut favorite. Hit me up in the comments with reasons why one is better than the other. Thanks so much for watching, and as always, I'll see you on the battlefield.